friends, Techman Pat here. Hope you are doing well. Welcome, today we are reviewing the Nest Hub Max. I actually had to read this because this is like the fifth time I'm trying to intro because this used to be the Google product, now it's a Nest product or sort of the other way around, Google bought Nest. So there's a couple of features that Nest brought into this uh, that we're gonna discuss, but we're gonna review it. We're gonna talk about what's good, what's bad, what's awful, and you A, also have watched a previous video where I traded this uh, for the HomePod, where I returned the HomePod because I was pretty annoyed about the Siri Assistant, and I went back to Google because Google has always worked really well for me in my Google Home. So this is the Google Max. It is the larger version of the Google Home with the screen or the Google Hub. Basically, it adds a tablet-like screen um, that is obviously a little bit bigger. It's the same size as an iPad, as you can see, roughly the same size, roughly, very roughly. Um, it is very, very expensive at 300 plus dollars. Uh, 330, I believe, is where I got it for, or maybe 280. I can't remember right now. But here's the price that I found here, and here's another price that I found. Um, there's a few things I want to talk about. First of all, it is a Google Assistant, so if you are in the Google ecosystem, right on, you'll fit in quite well. So size-wise, obviously it's a bit different, but in the space inside is very similar. You've got the speakers, you've got a bit of smarts, you've got the drivers for the screen to drive that monitor. But other than that, sound-wise, it is very similar. It is a bit more bassy, but I have found that the high-end music, so if I really put it up really loudly, is not as good as the Google Home. Now, I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing, but it is something to note that this is not gonna be super loud, but it will fill the room because the lower bass response on this is really, really good. And that's a big plus, especially when you're gonna have this in a kitchen or a central point in your house, because this is where it fits. It really fits in the kitchen. Even all the advertisements for it are for the kitchen because Google's like, well, guys, this is where it fits in. This is, this is really the place for it. And when it is in the kitchen, apart from music, being a Google Assistant and asking things like setting meetings, uh, playing music, both from YouTube and your subscription, if you have one to the Google Music subscription or uh, YouTube Premium that used to come with the Google uh, Music subscription, I'm not sure if it does still now, uh, it's gonna be a really good experience getting music out of it. Now, if you don't have those subscriptions, you can still use all the features and YouTube Music. However, you will have ads. And these aren't going to be your standard ads, these are gonna be your video ads. So if you hate ads, good luck. You're gonna have a pretty bad time. So if you have a smart home, you will be able to control all the little smart features that can integrate into Google Home. I, for myself, have been using TP-Link's uh, home products such as lights, cameras and plugs and they have integrated really well into the Google Home ecosystem. I can control every one of those bits of I suppose plugs or lights from the Google Home around the house and it works really, really well and it's actually quite fast. Not as fast as flicking a switch on light, but it's fast enough to make it a little bit interesting and maybe potentially change the way you use your home products. So let's talk about the differentiating factor. Not only the size, but mainly the screen. You can get a small screen, it'll be doing the same exact thing as we will discuss now. So. There's a couple of things with the screen. First of all, it has a camera here. So you can make video calls with your friends or family uh, or strangers, if you so wish, I suppose, with, via Google Duo. Now, this is just a standard video call, but it is quite nice when, let's say you've integrated your Android phone into here, and if somebody is calling, you can take a video call here while cooking or cleaning or washing the dishes, whatever you might be doing in the kitchen, it could actually kind of give you a hands-free way to speak to someone catch up with the family, but again, it's in the kitchen, so I suppose the idea is that you're speaking to people while doing another activity. Obviously, moving this into the living room, you can make family calls during Christmas to make yourself feel closer. Like There's an ad showing the kid on the table with the Google Max. In any case, you can do that sort of stuff, but I just don't see people moving this around. And that's why I wanted to sit in the kitchen. I've just actually completely refurbished, redone this whole kitchen, new tiles, new everything, and I wanted to sort of sit here and sort of show that this is kind of the place where you're going to be using it, right near the corner, near a power plug where everything else is to the side of it. Now, with the camera, you can also see who is actually walking into the room. I find this telling me good morning every time I walk into the kitchen in the morning and it says, hi Patrick. And that's a pretty 
savvy way to catch my face with the camera from quite far away. And not only is it obviously doing some facial recognition, it's also understanding that I'm a member of this family here. So when you have another member or your wife, your kids or your parents, you can actually add them into your Google Home ecosystem and do things like leave a message for your dad, a video message in fact, or leave a message for your wife. And when they step in and the camera catches their eye, it will pop up and notify them of this message. A very awesome thing, and I think that's just one of the coolest things you can do with this device. It is just, a, it's just one of those things. It's like a movie, sci-fi movie feature. <laughs> it really is. Further on, that camera also connects to the Nest system, so it can become your own in-home Nest camera. Now, the problem is I couldn't get it to work. I tried to connect it up, I tried to make it work, and it just kept crashing the actual app on my phone. Now I'm not using an Android phone, I'm using an iPhone, uh, that might be the reason. But to be honest, I really didn't have time to try and work that out and I'm not in the Nest ecosystem. But if you are, know that you can potentially use it, but I don't know if it works because I couldn't get it to work. With this screen, you can have just photos coming up. I've put a couple of albums from events in our lives, our wedding, engagement and so on, just to flick through. It's kind of interesting. It's a good use case for photos. Like how many times do you just sit down and view photos? This is actually a really cool way to have photos in your house and remember the good times. You can also set it as an art gallery of other uh, people's photos or I guess images. It doesn't really matter what you put on there. It is a screen. You can kind of do anything you want. Um, you can have a full screen lock clock basically where it will just show you the large clock. I like that personally. I really, I really think that's a really nice way of doing it. But if I was to have it like this, I would think Google would make an actual round clock screen that you can put on your wall and have it do that. You can also connect it to your Facebook account to bring through Facebook content. Now I haven't done that because I don't want to. I don't want to connect my social media into this because you never know what's going to show up on the screen when you have guests. A lot of the parts about the screen can be customized, the sizes of things, and you can hide things away. So it could just be clean photos, but you also want it to tell the time. Now, as an assistant, like I said, it does it really, really well. There is also a button on the back that you can set a privacy mode. There is also a volume button on the back too, to actually allow you to see how loud it is. Hey Google, be my interpreter. What language should I interpret to? English. Sure, English. What's the other language? Polish. Okay, before you start talking, make sure to wait until you hear this sound. Let's start. Cześć, która godzina? Hello, what time is it? O której godzinie idziemy do kina? What time do we go to the cinema? Powiedz mi, jaki jest twój ulubiony film? Tell me what your favorite movie is. A couple of extra things you can do with the screen and that is also to play videos. If you are cooking, you can play a YouTube recipe video. However, there is very little choice that you have on what video you play. And you might ask me, how does that work, Pat? Well, when you request a video to play, the Google algorithm will choose what video to play for you. So if you have a favorite cooking channel, it probably won't be a video from that channel. It'll be something else that Google chooses that they think that is the perfect video for what you've just requested. It won't show you comments, it won't show you how many likes and dislikes the video got, it will just present you the video and you can pause it, that's about it. So if there is something in the comments that you really kind of want to know or maybe it's specific to this video that the creator added to it like, hey guys, I forgot to say that you should add one more sugar cup to make it a little bit more fluffy blah, 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 then you will miss that. One thing to note, my wife actually really likes this. She used to get me to set up an iPad and play it and pause it. But with this is actually a way to view everything without touching the device. You can do the recipe, you can watch the video, you can pause it with your voice. Not only that, there are also steps that you can follow when it plays back a recipe that is written. It'll wait for you to do the next step and the next step. Hey Google, show me a recipe for pancakes. Here are some recipes I found. Hey Google, open the first one. Here you go. Let me know when you want to start cooking. Hey Google, start cooking. There are five steps. I'll read them one by one. When you're ready to hear more, you can say next step. 
There is no support for any other features. You can't load apps onto this, so don't think of this as a tablet with a speaker because I thought that as much and I kind of wished it was. You can't really load that many. I think there's a couple of apps. I think there's an HBO app in America that can load to it on it. There's no Netflix. Uh, so you're not gonna really be watching Netflix from here when you're cooking or doing anything in the kitchen. Hey Google, let's set up an appointment. What's the title of the event? Dinner out. Sure, when is the event? 7 p.m. Got it, dinner out today at 7 p.m. Do you want to save that? Yes. So let's finish off. This is probably not the best sound or music speaker you can get on the market, especially because of the size and its response. It's got a bloody screen in the way. Comparing it to the HomePod, it is the polar opposites. The HomePod was a fantastic music player with a terrible AI assistant. This is a okay music player with a fantastic assistant. This is by far the best implementation of the Google Assistant. It is quick, it is responsive, it is more responsive than any other device. It is made to be connected on your table. It is made to listen to you constantly and that's something to note. The microphone is always on and it will always hear you say hey Google. At 339 this is a very expensive screen. But it does a lot of things that uh, Siri, or for example, cannot do. And if you are integrated into the Google ecosystem, this is a very good purchase. If you're deciding between this and a Google Home, obviously the Google Home is much cheaper, but the screen, is it worth that extra couple of hundred dollars? Or even the bigger size that this is, the smaller one, is it still worth a couple of hundred more dollars? I think if it's going to be in your kitchen, certainly. That screen is actually gonna be much more useful to you than just a speaker with an assistant built in. The visual part of this is what makes it really useful for doing things in your home when you're in the kitchen specifically. If you're putting this somewhere on a bench or near a TV or somewhere else that isn't actually required you to stand around that area, then I highly do not recommend it unless you just want a very expensive picture frame, which you can probably get for a lot less, though not as well integrated. Friends, thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this video, tap the like button. If you would like to see more, please consider subscribing. This has been the review of the Google Home. I'll put the links below where you can get these devices uh, and I'll catch you guys in another video. Bye. Wob 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 wobby wobby wob wob